Hi, I'm Al Hogan, the certified window and door installer for Sierra Pacific Windows. And today we're going to be showing you how to install one of our uh, multi-slide plus pocketing corner units. We just got some stuff laid out right here that we use to, to get these products installed. Some of the most important things are the um, installation instructions. These come in the, in the crate with your door system. Since this is a cornering system, we also have an installation supplement that shows you how to install the corner unit. Uh, also in the crate is the um, sales drawing that gives you all of the dimensions for your rough opening and your panel sizes, frame sizes, all of that. So those are all gonna be very handy items to have. Uh, a few other things, tool-wise, we've got some suction cups. These come in really handy for moving the big, heavy panels around. And ours are about four foot by nine foot, so they're pretty heavy. Um, we also have a roller block, which comes in real handy for helping with moving the panels around so we don't damage the corners of the, uh, the panels. And we got our laser level. We're gonna need this and a standard six foot level. We got our we need a standard tape measure, a um, dry line and chalk box come in real handy. We also have some of these uh, non-compressible horseshoe shaped shims. We got three different thicknesses, so we can use these for leveling our uh, sills, our sill pan, and setting our, uh, our post interlocks. We can use them at the head tracks as well. All right, since we have all of our, uh, our tools and our components ready to go, we can go ahead and get started with installing this door system. The first thing we've done to get started installing this door system is to open up our crates and go through all the components, make sure everything is in the, in the crates shipped out from the plant. Uh, there is a, a packing list sent out in the crate and it has all the items that you need checked off. So some of the components that are in here are our head tracks. We have our two follow boards since this is a 90 degree system. There's one for each side. We have our, uh, our post interlocks and then we have our sill components back here. We have multiple sill components because it's a 90 degree corner unit and also because of the length we had to splice this sill so we'll be showing you how to do that splice later on. Uh, also, all of the hardware and fasteners you need are shipped in the crate, along with the install instructions and the sealant that you need to put the, the components together. Uh, these zip ties are sent out to secure the head tracks together. And if you want to put all those up in, as one unit, you can do it that way. It's just another option that's sometimes a little easier. So it looks like we have everything on site and we're ready to get started putting this system in the, in the opening. So I need a little bit back there. I might need a 16th. We do it here too. Yeah, we need a little bit here. We're hitting the bar over here. Should we, before we get too crazy with anything, put the sill on there and check our, our floor height since that was the point of all of this grinding? It looks like this was the worst section yep, on, this, on this run here. 
not sure where our plywood. This is low back here. So we have to shim it up a little bit to get it level. It's, it's I mean, we might. So we're miles ahead of where we're Exactly. How much do we need to go up? Well, we're, we probably got to shim it a 16th to get it level. Yeah. And then if we put the 16th inch shims spacer, yeah. we're going to lose it by an eighth, maybe. Yeah. Just yeah. right, just right in here. They can float that little bit. If they have to float a little section here, that's better than the whole shebang. That's going to be really close, I think. That's even more like 3 16ths, I think. We might only be, you know, within a 16th. So it looks like the way they cut this plate, you see how it's kind of arched, yeah. right? It's, it's just hitting that high point of that. We can grind that back down. Yeah, I can grind that down, no problem. Yeah, let's go with that. I think that's good there. Right there. Yeah, that should work. Spread. Now we'll have to go blue there. Um, so our first step before we start setting our, uh, our sills for the door system is to install our sill pans. And before we put our pans down, we had some unevenness in the concrete. So we had the high spots ground down. And at this point, we're just left with a little bit of uh, low spots in this area here that we have the shims, shims down. So we have those down there to make sure that our sill pan is at least uh, level or just slightly sloped toward the exterior. So any water that gets in the pan will drain away. And now that we got this all ground down, it looks like we're good to go to start setting a uh, sealant down and get our pans positioned in place. So we have three beads of continuous sealant applied under our pan and we've also overlapped onto the first pan that we set down here. This pan is going to be in the pocket and we want to make sure to set it on top of the pan that will be out here in the opening. So any water gets in here is going to go over that step and escape out into the opening there. We have that all set down and now we're just going to continue working our way toward the corner. Okay, so we have sealant applied to our downturn leg on our pan right here to make sure that it makes contact with the, um, with the foundation. That's gonna be our primary line of defense, keeping water from going under that sill pan. We're getting a lot of squeeze out where our pans are overlapping right there. We can just tool that in and have a nice watertight joint. Okay, so this is our last piece of the sill pan to set in. We've got a lot of sealant applied in the corner over there.
We've used a total of 15 tubes of sealant just to set our sill pans. Those set, now we're ready to start uh, dry fitting our sills. So here we are on day two of installing our multi-slide plus door system. Uh, the point we're at to right now is that we have our sill position in the rough opening. It's sitting on top of our sill pan we set yesterday. And we're to the point where we are ready to start uh, marking for our drain channels. We've already used our laser level and we have this entire sill system set within a 16th inch of being perfectly level. So we're gonna mark these drain channels and then we'll pull our sills out, apply our sealant and then reset them down in the sealant. These drain channels are very important because any water that collects in the sill is gonna make its way to this channel and drain out to the exterior. We also have these 16th inch shims to create uh, some space between our sill pan and our sill so that the water can travel freely out to the exterior. So we're gonna mark about two inches on either side of this drain channel and our sealant will go around that area so that we don't block the drain and create any issues with uh, water backing up. The first thing we're gonna do to assemble our uh, corner section of our sill is to attach these L brackets. We have our short leg turned upside down right now to try and make it a little easier. So we're gonna attach these first and then we'll flip it over and attach them to the bottom side of the long leg. So we're just gonna attach these with the supplied self-tapping screws right to the bottom of the sill and they're gonna be located in this center track. They fit right in there nice and tight. They're sloppy and sloppy in this one and they don't fit out here. So that's really the only one they fit in. So now that we have these L brackets attached, we can flip this short leg over and attach the other half of the brackets to the long leg of the sill. Now that we have our corner assembled, we're ready to assemble our splice on the long leg of the sill. We had to splice this because of the length. It's uh, longer than the extrusions come in. So from the factory, they sent out the two pieces. The short one will be in our pocket. Roll pins are already attached to the um, short section of the sill. And we're just gonna line them up with the long section and drive them in until this gap is um, nice and tight all the way across there. And we do not need any sealant in the um, joint. Any water that does travel down there will get into our sill pan and just drain out to the exterior. Okay, I think we're ready. We have to dry fit it again. All the way across here too. If this, if this was left open, the water is gonna go in there and it's gonna blow over to the inside and just, we're gonna have a flood. So that's why we go continuous in the back and discontinuous in the front. Okay, now that we have our sill all assembled, we're ready to go ahead and drop it down into the sealant. We have our 16th inch shims sealed down with sealant and uh, that's gonna create our drainage space for water to escape to the exterior. We have our drain pass open, so water will flow out of those. We have a continuous bead of sealant along the upturned leg of the sill pan in the back. We're discontinuous in the front to create that drainage for the water. So with that said, I think we're gonna gather the troops and get everybody on here and drop it down in the ceiling.
Okay, now that we have our sill set in the sealant, nice and level, we're gonna go ahead and plumb up off the center lines of our tracks and get some locations on the head to start setting our head tracks. We have our two uh, short leg head tracks already temporarily tacked in place. And the next thing we're gonna do is attach our most interior head track on the long leg. We have our um, two L brackets already connected to the short leg. It's just a couple of these. We put these on the most interior and the most exterior tracks. We've got our laser set up. So once this is screwed in place, our laser is gonna be right on the top of the uh, head track. And we've got our shims between the, um, the header and our, our head tracks. So we're gonna go ahead and attach this one to the header. We're gonna use the two inch screws going through the head into the, the header. And then there's a 5 8 self-tapping screw that goes through the uh, corner brackets. So there's our inside corner. Next we'll attach all of our intermediate tracks and our last one will make the outside miter. Just like we did down at the sill, we gotta uh, do our splice up at the uh, head track. We use the same roll pins to connect the splice, the short section to the long one. We're just gonna drive that in from the end. Once it's nice and tight here, we'll use the two inch screws and secure it to the header. We'll do the same thing with the uh, remaining tracks all the way out to the exterior. So we're gonna install our next track and we're gonna butt it right up to the first track that was installed. The next one just has a square cut on the end. We're gonna butt it up to the exterior track on the short leg. We're also using the included uh, zip ties to help us hold this in place. Just make it a little bit easier to get it up here into the right location. We'll put two more of these and then we'll get to our outside corner. Something we're doing to make install on these head tracks a little easier is to uh, use a couple of our shims where we know the, um, the, the thickness we need using our laser level. We're just attaching them with the uh, masking tape so that we're not trying to hold too many components at once when we're putting that up into the header. It's just a little trick that makes it, makes it easier. We're now putting in our last head track. We already have our L brackets connected to the outside of our short legs. We're just gonna slide them in there and then attach the screws and work our way down, put our splice piece in and we should be good to go.
just keep screwing this off. And then once we get these all secured, we'll be ready to start setting panels. All right, so now that we have all of our head tracks secured to the header, we're ready to start putting our panels in. When we install our panels, we're gonna start with the most interior panel, which is gonna be the one that's gonna slide all the way to that corner. And then from there, we're gonna work our way out. So these guys are gonna go ahead and put the panel in. We're gonna start by putting it up into the top, into the head track. Once it's in the head track, we drop it down onto the sill track and then it should roll freely. Okay, so just make sure you're that side, that side of this. Come toward the pocket a little bit. Yep. There. There we go. Our panels are 51 inches wide, and this opening that we drop our panel into is 51 inches. That doesn't leave us any room to drop our panel and it's gonna be really tight to that trimmer over there. So the system is sent out with two six inch sections that are removable. So we're gonna take those out. We'll drop our panel in. And once we slide it back into the pocket, then we can uh, reattach these with sealant. After unpackaging your pocketing panel, you'll notice there's a couple blocks on it. This block is attached to the edge of the panel to protect the panel extension down at the bottom. It protrudes out from the edge, so this is on there to keep it from getting broken off. There's also a block on the bottom of the panel that runs the whole width to prevent any damage. So you'll need to remove those before installing them into the frame. Another reason we have a removable section of the drain cover is because this panel has a, um, a panel extension down on the bottom and it overhangs into our pocketing side a few inches here. So we need to be very careful once all the packaging is removed from that, that it doesn't get damaged. So they're going to pick the panel up, drop that in, all of that will slide into the pocket and then we can put our following board on.
We have our uh, leading panel already installed on the short side. Now we're ready to install the second panel. When you're installing these panels, you want to make sure that your interlocks overlap. So you take your next panel and center it over your interlock. There's another interlock here and you want to make sure they engage. If you were to install this panel to the right of that leading panel, the interlocks would not engage. So we're ready to go ahead and put this one in. We're not down in the groove because we're way too far to the left. You got to travel way to the right before it's going to go down. There you go. We're ready to apply our follow board to the pocketing panel now. I've already placed the follow board on the edge and pre-drilled through the pre-drilled holes in the, um, in the follow board there. So we're gonna run a bead of sealant on the exterior edge of the cladding here and across the bottom on the panel extension. Now that we have our sealant applied across the vertical edge and across the bottom, we can take our follow board and set it right on there and then screw it off. We're gonna use the three inch construction screw that were in the box supplied by the factory. You can tell I was doing this from within the pocket and our interior pocket wall is not built yet so it was a lot easier to do if this was a very narrow track and that wall was built it would be extremely difficult to get in here and and do that task now that we have our panels installed our uh, follow board is applied to the pocketing panel so it's time to install our post interlock on the exterior side this engages into the following board that we installed earlier it makes the uh, weather seal to keep air and water from going inside there. So we're just gonna go ahead and attach that. There's a notch up here at the top and another one at the bottom that go around the tracks. I'm just gonna slip that up in there. Once that's screwed off, there's a mohair weather strip in there that seals that gap, keeps the bugs out, and our panel will still slide back and forth there. We're ready to attach our follow board on the short side of this door system. Uh, this is the one that already has the interior pocket wall built, so it's gonna be a lot more difficult to get this uh, follow board installed. I've already started running the sealants on the high portion. Now I'm just gonna continue it down to the bottom and across the panel extension. So I have sealant applied all along the clad edge of the panel and then across the bottom of the panel extension. I'm gonna set the follow board on the bottom first and then engage it into the head track. Then we'll use our three inch screws to secure it. Uh, 
Once we have the follow board applied, we can go ahead and apply the post interlock on the exterior side. If any of your panels need adjustment, that can be accomplished by turning the screws and the wheels at the bottom of the panel. There's two wheels on the bottom rail and they have a plug covering the access hole. We use a putty knife to remove the plugs and in a number three Phillips screwdriver to adjust the wheels. We can raise and lower them accordingly to whatever the panel needs to be in the correct position. The first thing we'll need to do is to remove the plug covering the access hole. We'll just use a putty knife and pry that plug out of there. Once that's removed, we'll use a suction cup and have someone else take the weight off of the panel so we don't strip out the screw trying to lift the entire weight of the panel. Once the weight's off, we'll use our number three Phillips screwdriver and turn the screw until the panel's adjusted accordingly. Our next step is to reinstall our drain covers we removed to install our pocketing panel. To do this, we're just gonna apply a small bead of sealant on both sides of each drain cover. We do not wanna to put too much sealant in here because we don't wanna block the drain channel completely. That will prohibit water from traveling in there. Small bead on each side. just snap down in there and we're good to go. Okay, our next step is to install the collector plate. This collector plate will catch the leading panel once it's opened and you won't have to manually push every panel. You can just push the leading panel and it'll catch all of them and, and open and close them. So to do that, we're going to position it close to the top up here and you wanna make sure to pre-drill it into that intermediate panel. The collector plate also has a little cushion, a double a sticky pad applied to it that'll cushion it when it hits the panel or follow board. Now that we have our collector plate installed, we can move on to applying our mohair pads. We're gonna put our mohair pads on the intermediate and the pocketing panel up at the head track. We're gonna put these up there to prevent any excess air or bugs and critters from going to the interior from the top of that panel. Okay, so now we're ready to apply our mohair pad to the head tracks. We're gonna put a mark here at the end of the panel when it's in the fully closed position. Then we're gonna open it a little bit and I've cut my mohair pad so it's the width of the head track in there. And we're going to apply it across the width of that track. There's another one of these mohair pads on top of the panel. So when you close it, the two will overlap and knock down the air gap between the panel and the head track. So on the interior side, we're gonna do the same thing. Let's put a mark at the end of the panel when it's in the fully closed position. Once that mark is there, we can open the panels. We can apply the second mohair pad now we have one at each end of the panel. We'll do the same thing for the pocketing panel. And if you have a system that requires uh, more than one intermediate panel, you'll do the same to all of them as needed. Okay, after two full days of work, uh, we have our multi-slide plus system all installed. Um, hope this video helps you out. And we wanna send a special thanks to Christensen Lumber for helping out with this install.